Hey my friends, today I have a runner's active recovery workout that'll help you break a sweat but leave you ready to take on your next run. This episode of Class Fit Sugar is presented by Hoka One One. All you need is a small towel, so let's get ready to move.
doing here are to keep you injury free, right? And to keep you strong so that you guys don't overuse different muscles that compensate for other ones being weak. So this move is a single legged touch. So we're gonna be standing on one leg and we're gonna bend this knee and hip, reaching towards the floor, okay? If you can get all the way there, amazing. Come all the way up, you can balance, you can touch to keep your balance, or you can come down. When you come up, you're not gonna touch, right? You're gonna bring that knee up. You can also decide to add a little skip, right? So if you can do a little single legged skip on that leg, you're really working on stability and strength as you go down and then a little explosiveness as you come up, right? So this can be modified and it also can be very advanced depending on your level. Good, let's switch up sides, boom, love it. So one side's always stronger for me than the other. I'm always way more balanced and stable on my left. <laughs> what about you guys? I don't know, they both feel a little shaky. Yeah, definitely the right leg is a lot harder for me. I can feel it. Oh good, I love it. Good, nice and slow on the way down. Bend the knee and hip, stabilize. Good, and then try to be explosive on that way up as much as possible. Breathing it out. Oh, whoa, this is my difficult side, but that's why it's so important to work these sides individually, right? And relax, so that unilateral work is gonna make you such a stronger runner and such a better athlete, okay? Now, coming down onto your butt, we're gonna do a figure four stretch with a bridge. So first, I want you to start here. You're in a figure four with your legs stretching your hip. If you can do a bent knee, you're gonna feel that stretch even more. Now, stay here or lift your hips into a bridge and come back down. So we're gonna add a little bit of an extension, good. Work in the glutes, press through your heel, on the floor and squeeze that glute muscle as you lift up. Really think about opening up your knee, right? So this knee stays open as much as possible. You're getting that stretch. Breathe. Nice, Casey, you look beautiful. How's that stretch feel? Good. Yeah. Isn't it nice? Yeah, still Good. feel it. And switch, all right? So you're either holding the stretch, all right, this is amazing for your hips to stay healthy. And then press up if you wanna add a little strengthening to the move. You feel the stretch when you sit, and then you feel that nice extension and that glute working on that bridge. I like here too how you get your shoulders opened up, right? Yeah. So important for runners, because we do everything with that forward thrusting of the arms and shoulders, really opening up those shoulders, gonna keep that body healthy. Keep a balance, one more. Lift, squeeze, and relax. Okay, now, core, very important. So starting with your legs straight, you can do this one. It's the runner's crunch, but here's the modified version, all right? If you can't go all the way to the floor to do the crunch and come up, I want you to stay here. I want you to do the crunch and then sit up tall. So crunch, sit up tall, here we go. If you can, roll it all the way back, roll it up, crunch, and then slowly peel the back down. Come up, crunch, slowly peel down. So you're getting each vertebrae to tip the floor, so you really feel that deep abdominal wall pulling in. Go at your own pace. The slower you go on the way down, the harder it's gonna be, the more you can really control it and keep those abs engaged. Nice, Casey. Oh yeah, slow-mo, baby, I love it. Good job, you guys. Or you're up here. Remember, all the way tall, and then you're leaning back to crunch. All the way up tall, leaning back to crunch. Remember, either one, you're really engaging that whole abdominal wall, training the core to stay strong. Good. That's it. A couple more. Nice, Avia, you look great. Let's go, one more. Beautiful. Bring it up and relax. You guys look amazing. So. We're gonna flip it into a plank position. Work in the shoulders. Now, I know that you're thinking, oh man, we're runners, Anna. We don't need to work our shoulders. <laughs> that is not correct. You need that whole body to be functioning and operating at its optimal level. So here, you can either start on your knees, right? And I want you to lift the arm open, bring it back down to the floor. Lift the arm open, bring it back. Or you can go all the way from the toes and you're gonna open, rotate, 
and then bring it back. Open, rotate, and bring it back. Good job. So either way, you're working on the stability of your shoulder, your core is engaged, your abs are working. Good job, you guys. Bring it back. You don't know how many runners I know that cannot plank and use that abdominal wall to hold their body weight up. So this is so important because when you're running, even though you're not horizontal to the floor and you're vertical to the ground, if you are strong enough to really hold that body in that horizontal plane, you guys are gonna be so much stronger, faster, and gonna be less prone to injury. <sighs> Beautiful. Last one. Open it up. <laughs> Love it. All right, now we're gonna finish with my favorite, the down dog walk. So you're on your hands and knees. You're gonna tuck your toes. You're gonna lift your hips up towards the sky, really pressing the hips up towards the sky, lengthening out the arms. And you're just gonna pedal the feet, right? So one heel drops to the floor as the other knee bends. And I really want you to sink into it. Take it slow, Abby. I want you to really enjoy each of those calves reaching towards the floor. Really feel that extension through the hip, through the glute, through the calf, through the hamstring. Feel that? Let your head drop in between those arms. I know this is good strengthening for the shoulders as well. You need your arm power when you're running. When you're doing those hills and you need some strength from that upper body to get you up that hill or that hike or your speed walker. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, that upper body strength is gonna make you faster. Good, last one. Stretching it out and relax. My friends, amazing job. Now, let's come up to our feet and we're gonna keep it going with the upper body mobility. It's so important to be strong here. So you've got your feet about hip width apart. Your hands are gonna be here as if you are going to kick the field goal between my arms, yes. right? Elbows at 90 and you're just gonna drop the palms so you can see the hands and then open the palms, right? So drop and open. You're just trying to rotate at a 90 degree bend at the shoulders. If you wanna challenge yourself, go without both feet supporting you, right? Work on the lower body again, work on the core even more here. And if you wanted resistance, you can add three to five pounds in those those hands and I'm telling you like it will be hard to do five of these for sure right so keep here get the form nailed down be able to do it with your balance and working on that core stability and your balance and your lower legs working and then add resistance and you can see how much more you know strong and stable you'll be in that upper body now let's go into what I love the external rotations with the towel you're gonna love this one. So right here, with your palms facing up, I want you to grab the ends of the towel. It could be a hand towel's eyes. And we're gonna be a resistance as we open, and then alternating sides. So I want you to keep your elbows in really tight. So as you pull your elbow open, you're resisting with the other arm. So it's a tug of war with yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little silly looking, but I am telling you, your shoulders should be burning here. Mm -hmm. And you're working all the external rotators of your shoulder. So when you've got that arm speed and you're driving that elbow back, you need these shoulders to be super stable, super strong. And these are getting all those small muscle groups really, really warm and strong. Yeah, oh, they're warm. Ooh, yeah, they're warm. Oh my gosh, I'm like burning here. Yeah. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Couple more seconds. Doing amazing. Keep it going. You should be at the point where you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I can't do it anymore. Oh, so if you're going it. easy on your resistance, you could just be la da 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 da, back and forth, but really give yourself resistance here and relax. Shake it out. Ooh. We're coming back onto the floor for one of my favorite spider crunch moves. So again, now we're working on the core, the upper body. All right. And we're going to be here in a plank position. And if you're modifying, you're just gonna bring one knee up to the opposite elbow, back and forth. If you wanna advance it, I want you to go knee, I mean, sorry, foot to hand, back and forth, slowly, all right? You're not trying to speed through this. You're trying to go as slow as possible so that you can really work on your stability, right? It's easy to be like, whoo, whoo, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But we're not working on momentum here, we're working on stability, so really try to stabilize, keep your abs engaged, or you're just not picking a hand up because this is a great modification to work your way up to this more advanced move. 
you can see, <laughs> if I'm not tightening my abs, I just fell over, <laughs> right? So you really do have to tighten your core and get yourself into that place of real stability. <sighs> you're working your obliques, you're working your back, every muscle when you're working your core, you guys. So it's not just your abs, it's your back, your obliques, Ooh, deep I feel abdominals, <laughs> I know, I know. And relax. Amazing, because that is not an easy move, and no I know joke. it. All right, now, this next one, really for opening up the hips and the shoulders, the scorpion kick, all right? So, you're facing down towards the floor, your arms are open to a T, or you're gonna start modifying with your arms above your head, okay? Because for this one, you can put one hand down to stabilize as you open one leg up. So you're bringing that foot up towards the opposite side of the body, you're opening up that hip flexor, right? Then you're coming back down and switching sides. So I'm modifying right now, Casey's not. Me and Abby are showing the modification, reaching up, open that hip flexor, good, and back down, okay? Or you've got your hands open, so you're really getting a huge stretch through your chest and through the hip flexors, good. And your back, just go slow, back and forth. Don't try to exert too much force here. You don't wanna to try to force yourself to go further. You wanna just feel that stretch and let yourself kind of stop where your body stops you. Good, nice. Casey can almost get her foot up to her hand and that's the goal, <laughs> is to get that foot up towards the opposite hand. I can't even do it. But if you do this more, you can get closer and closer, especially if you're more flexible. But this is an amazing move to do the opposite of what running, hiking, walking all does, and that's tighten the hip flexors, right? Good, back and forth, one more. Let's go each side, open it up. Beautiful. Good, last one. Oh. And bring it back to the middle, and relax, awesome job. All right, last move, you guys, come on up to your feet. Now, remember, I said we don't do enough lateral work as runners, right? So here I wanna work into the lateral lunge, stepping out into a nice wide stance. You're gonna sit back into the hips, getting a deep stretch through that inner groin, working on the glute here and quad. You're gonna power back to the middle and switch sides. So big step, sit back into the heel of that foot, really getting that stretch. I don't want you to rush through this one. I want you to really feel the stretch. I want you to allow yourself to deeply sit into that, as low as you feel comfortable, of course, you know. I know that you might have sensitive knees, right? So don't go too low, but the hips shifting back is gonna immediately open up that groin, and that's really what you wanna stretch as a runner, because honestly, avoiding those groin injuries, those hamstring pulls, is exactly what you want to avoid. Good, coming back, sit it back, nice job. And beautiful. Woo! I was powerful off that, <laughs> that last one. Sitting back, how you guys like this one? Good? Feels good. Feels good? Yeah. Awesome. All right, my friends, if you did all those mobility moves, your body is feeling so opened up and so ready for that next run. Now, the cool down, I want you to practice this over and over again. It's gonna keep you feeling even healthier so that you recover faster after a workout. Let's so the it. first one is gonna be a crossover hamstring stretch, okay? Now this is amazing because here, you bend that front knee, you extend the back leg nice and long and drop all the way down, letting your head even drop, letting your nose sink towards your thigh, letting your head, your ponytail, try to glide against the mat like Casey's, right? Got long hair and flexibility. Your forehead could basically touch. But you're getting your IT band here, your hamstring, your hip, your low back. This is why I love the crossover hamstring stretch. If you haven't tried this one, it's a must for those runners, okay? Slowly peel up, get a nice extension, and switch sides. So you don't gotta be down there forever. You're getting so many muscle groups at once. Remember, a soft bend in that front knee, your back leg is nice and long, and you're getting a nice reach towards those toes, right? If you just went for a run, you might feel nice and opened up and loose, and that's the best time to do this. Just like now, when we did all those mobility and those agility moves, really keeping our body open and mobile and strong, we worked on so much stability. Good, roll it up. 
Awesome. You should feel that all the way through your hips, yeah. your IT band, right? So oh my good. gosh, I love it. Now, the bent knee calf stretch, not a lot of people do this, but you are going to be one of the few that know it, all right? They teach it in sports performance. You're gonna have your feet as if you were going into a calf stretch. So you have your back leg straight and your front knee bent. This is just your regular everyday calf stretch. But if you bring this foot in closer and you bend the back knee, you're gonna get a deeper calf stretch. It's the soleus. It's underneath the calf muscles that look sexy in heels. These are the muscles that wrap all the way under your foot and can cause that plantar fasciitis, you know, that little pain you get underneath your foot that gives you all that annoying Awful. pain. It is, yeah, you don't want that. So do this stretch, it's amazing. It's gonna make you feel so good. And you might not feel it at first, but really sink into it. Your body weight's right in the middle. Come up and switch. So start big, right? You feel it, press into the heel, bring it in. Bend the knee, you don't have to go far, all right? And if you're really tight, you'll really feel it. If you're not that tight, you won't feel it that much, but it doesn't mean it's not helping you. Just because you don't feel a stretch and it doesn't give you pain, it's not like, oh, I can't touch my toes. Just because it doesn't feel like too much tension doesn't mean it's not helping you and improving your mobility. So hold it for 30 seconds, enjoy it, give your body that extension. You're gonna be so much healthier with those feet and ankles. Good, nice, and relax. All right, now, standing figure four. This one takes all my freaking strength to not fall over. Okay. But if you have something to hold on to, grab a chair, grab a couch, go into a figure four. And this is great because if you're at a light and your hips are tight, you can go right into a stretch. You can hang onto the post and you can stretch your hip. And this, my friends, getting your piriformis, it does so much work with any rotation in your hips, right? And so you're constantly rotating, using all those muscles. Make sure to stretch them. So this figure four is gonna help you out as well as seated. You could do this sitting down, right? <sighs> Breathe it out. <sighs> I'm giving you the best stretches for activity like running, like hiking, like walking. So remember, these are the major, mus major muscle groups that need your love, okay? So keep it in the forefront of your memory and in your practice. Oh, this one's tighter. Yeah, <laughs> this is my favorite one. Five this star. hip is like, hello. <laughs> Why haven't you given me any love, Anna, in a couple days? Did you forget about me? Did you forget about me? It is a tiny little muscle. Yes. Yes, That's find terrible. your foam roller. <laughs> find your foam roller. Good. All right, last two are gonna be very, very important. Your rotator cuff. So remember, we worked our shoulders with these and with these. This is gonna be the stretch for it. You have your wrist on your hip. You're gonna grab your elbow and pull forward. Ooh. All right. Hello. So I always reference the chicken wing when I do this stretch because we have chicken wings too. It's called our scapula, right? And so you know how you pull a chicken wing off, there's all those tendons and muscles? We have them too. And if we don't stretch them, they get really tight and then they don't move, right? So if we don't move fluidly, then we get really slow, right? And then that's where we can tend to have pain and tightness. So remember, really open up your chicken wing, <laughs> even if you're a vegetarian, <laughs> right? <laughs> I feel the wing. It's popping out of my back. My mom would call them angel wings. Aww. That's what she would call them. Everyone needs a mom like that. <laughs> Calling you angel wings. Oh, that's why Casey's so sweet. Good. And then the last one, quads. These are your powerhouse muscles other than your glutes. But here, just doing a standing quad stretch, right? You can do this in line at the grocery store. Who cares if people look at you funny, <laughs> right? I do this at the airport all the time and people are like, wow, she must be like super addicted to fitness. I'm like, no, I just sit on a plane and I just ran and now I need to stretch my quads. So remember, give your body this opening because you're using these muscles all day, every day, especially if you're using them during your runs. Whew, breathe it out. Give yourself that nice flow of oxygen. Whew, replenish. Good. Remember here, your leg shouldn't be all the way out to the side, right? Nice and close to the body. Beautiful. Maximize the stretch. You can even squeeze that glute a little tighter to get that extension your glute is that antagonistic muscle to your quad. And so if you squeeze it, it's gonna pull that muscle into a deeper stretch. 
and relax. You are amazing way to get your mobility, we your agility, it. and all your flexibility in to have an amazing recovery. Awesome job, guys.